In today's video, we'll be talking about how Dior protects against the dreaded flashlight attack. Without a doubt, flashlight attacks have been one of the worst things you can hear about on a DeFi platform, and many a platform has suffered from significant asset losses as a result of these attacks. But what is a flash loan exactly? In its most basic form, a flash loan is a loan that's given to an individual or an entity that is completely uncollateralized. So there's no collateral, there's no backing for this loan. And it comes with one key condition. And to really understand it, we can take a sort of a bird's eye view and look at it as consisting of three major steps. So in step one, you take out a loan. In step two, you use that loan. And in step three, you repay that loan. But here comes the twist. It has to all happen within the same transaction. So you might think, well, all right, if you're borrowing money and it's only taking place in one transaction, it sounds fairly benign and very fairly har harmless. And that's where you'd be wrong, because even though the loan has to be paid off within the same transaction uh, that the money is lent out, you can do quite some damage based on, of course, what you do with it. And, and uh, Urine Finance, for example, has suffered a really big loss where they lost $11 million worth of assets simply due to a flash loan exploit. So if we look back at the schematic step uh, chart of how a flash loan takes place, it really is the second step, which is the stuff that you do in between the loan being issued and the repayment that determines whether or not uh, a flash loan is benign or malignant, because it could very well be a normal transaction, part of a uh, financial settling uh, process, and that's completely benign. But if it's used with malicious intent and the objective is to drain assets uh, as a result of manipulation, then we term it a flash loan attack. But the best way to really understand how and why flash loan attacks happen is to learn from previous exploits. And let's take a look at history here. So one of the classically studied examples are the two flash loan attacks that happened on BZX. So this is the, uh, the first loan attack. So what happened here was $10 million worth of Ether was lent out on the DeFi platform DYDX, and that money was split in half. So $5 million worth of ETH was uh, used as collateral to gain more uh, wrapped BTC on Compound, and then the other half of the money was used to pump the price of uh, wrap BTC on Kyber Network, which uses, of course, Uniswap to fulfill the orders. And because, of course, the liquidity there was not very high, the price uh, pumped very quickly. And the person who had leveraged their ETH on Compound, as well as the wrap BTC that they got from the Kyber Network, was able to dump uh, the wrap BTC for a much higher, much more inflated price. I think it was 2.5 times what uh, RAP BTC was going for on the open markets. And they made a profit of 1,271 ETH, which was drained out of, of course, BZX. And of course, BZX was having a very bad week that, uh, that moment. And a second attack uh, struck them. And this time it's a little bit more complex because they targeted a coin that had much less liquidity. So they targeted here SUSD, which was synthetic US dollar, stablecoin. And what they did was they flash borrowed 7,500 Ether from BZX. And then uh, they went, uh, they took a portion of that money and they pumped the price of SUSD on Kyber Network, whose Oracle, of course, is used on BZX. And because Kyber doesn't have that much SUSD, all it took was a, a minor purchase, or in the case, minor compared to the loan, of course, and the price doubled. So a stable coin that should have gone for $1, which was actually going for $1 in other places, jumped to $2 on Kyber, simply because Kyber didn't have that much liquidity. And then with the remaining portion of the money, it was used as a collateral to gain a very large amount of synthetic uh, US dollars on the open market, which still valued SUSD at $1. And then with this large amount of SUSD that had been, uh, that had been uh, acquired, they did a collateralized borrow of Ether against SUSD on BZX. 
Now think about it. If SUSD was still valued at one dollar, they would have just gotten the ETH equivalent of their asset, which doesn't really introduce that much profit. But because BZX relies on the price oracle of Kyber, which was reporting a price of two dollars for SUSD, suddenly the SUSD that the attacker bought at one dollar was worth twice as much, so they got twice as much ether. And then, of course, they repaid their loan, and they made off with 2,378 ether, all of which was drained from the uh, BZX protocol. Even complicated and sophisticated uh, DeFi protocols like uh, Yearn suffer from flash loan attacks because they interact with other protocols. So here what the, the attacker did was they got money from uh, DY, DX, and AVA, and they used it to destabilize the die pool in, uh, in Curve. And they uh, leveraged the differences between the different protocols here to uh, make a payoff of, of around $11 million worth of uh, crypto assets. And that was just really uh, disastrous for uh, Curve and, uh, and Yearn. And of course, it's really because these protocols don't talk to each other. They're very uh, isolated, and they all rely on separate oracles on sampled populations, so they don't reflect the real world data. And yeah, this is really the crux of the issue. As long as DeFi continues to work in silos, and the oracles reflect those individual silos, attackers will be able to manipulate the oracles from which the smart contracts rely on their uh, data. And that will always be a point of vulnerability and liability for DeFi. And the real problem here is not per se that DeFi is inherently bad, but if you look at one of the attacks here, which is attack two, it's the fact that BZX relied on an oracle from one particular network, which happened to have low liquidity. So it could have been easily manipulated. If BZX had relied on multiple or other oracles, this could have been prevented. And the thing is, flash on attacks are not a disease of DeFi. They're a symptom of a much more serious disease, and that's the centralized oracle issue. And these are not only my words. Large people in the DeFi and blockchain space are, are saying this. This is, of course, an article that was published by a member of the Chainlink team. Centralized price oracles are a serious liability for DeFi. So the question is, how is Dior any different? To really understand how Dior makes a change here and also provides an extra layer of security against these sort of attacks, you have to understand how Dior works. So basically, Dior is an, a data aggregation oracle, and when a smart contract requires information, it pulls data from multiple independent oracles and provides an aggregated result to a smart contract. And you might think, well, okay, that's, that's fine, but what does aggregated data really bring to the game? Well, Here's the thing, when data is aggregated from multiple independent sources, you no longer have the problem of silos, which are these uh, local platforms or localized uh, pools that can be manipulated, because even if one single pool is manipulated, other oracles from other pools still reflect true data. And that is, of course, advantageous, because then the negative impact of a single manipulated oracle is diluted. And even if multiple oracles were to be affected due to some black swan event, Dior's voting mechanism can also dynamically adjust the weights and the reputation of oracles within the aggregator. So you have a very rapid way of determining which oracles are behaving properly and which aren't. But even if you have a large, massive blockchain devastating event where or multiple oracle systems are targeted, Dior has an extra layer of protection because in addition to its aggregation, there is a randomizer function which randomly assigns oracles to an aggregation. So not every aggregation instance has the exact same oracles and not all oracles are in every aggregation. This is something that we'll dive into in a future episode, but it's another layer of security in addition to the aggregation and dynamic voting. 
In summary, flashland attacks have drained significant funds from DeFi protocols, and if left unchecked, they form a major liability to the growth of DeFi. Now, we mustn't think of flashland attacks as a, a symptom of the DeFi problem, because there really isn't one. It's more serious than that. It's really a problem of the fact that we rely on centralized oracles for smart contract execution. Dior solves this flash on attack problem by introducing both data aggregation from multiple independent sources and a dynamic reputation system where uh, Dior holders can vote on the reputation of oracles and determine which oracles are suitable and have valid data. Now, I hope that this video has given a bit of insight into why Dior is trying to solve a number of real-world problems with DeFi. Now, look forward to our next video on how Dior's randomizer function works.